Hi, welcome to Lease Tax Training presented by the Motor Vehicle Division. The definition of a leased vehicle is a motor vehicle which is titled in the name of a leasing company and the individual who is leasing the motor vehicle which is leased for a period of more than 28 days. When you look at an application for title that is going into a lessor leasee name, first look at the type of vehicle being titled. Leased vehicles that qualify to pay tax based on their payments are vehicles that are less than 16,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. That includes cars, pickups, vans, and certain trailers. Motorcycles, motorized bicycles, and off-road vehicles. If it is not one of the above mentioned vehicles, the title will still be issued to a lessor and lessee, but the taxes owed is based on the purchase price. So heavier pickups, trucks, semi-trucks, semi-trailers, snowmobiles, buses, and mobile homes, motor homes do not fall under the lease tax law. Second, determine if the lease is an open end or close end lease. If the terms of a lease are set with payments and an end date, it is considered a close end lease. Taxes due on the monthly payments. If and when the vehicle is purchased at the end of the lease, taxes due on the buyout amount at that time. If the lease payments have an extension option with changes of payments and so on, it is considered an open-ended lease. There will be a document accompanying the paperwork that indicates it's an open-end lease and no lease agreement is needed. An example of an open-end lease statement is attached. Wheels LT is an example of a business that does open-end leasing. Most of the time, these are leasing companies leasing to a business with fleets of vehicles. The tax is due on the leasing company's purchase price of the vehicle. If the unit is purchased at the end of the lease, the lessee qualifies for a tax exemption. Now I'm gonna explain a lease agreement. The example is from Ally. The lease agreement will have the lessee's name followed by the lessor. In most situations, the lessor begins with the dealership name. Then the agreement has, if you check the box, it's listed who the lessor is being assigned to. In this situation, the dealer assigned the lease to Ally Bank Lease Trust. Then you have your vehicle information, and then it goes into your monthly payments. A lease agreement has the information up front as to what is going to be paid on your monthly payment, how many months it is, and if there's other charges being added to that. Then you have an itemization of the amount that's due at lease signing. This would be any capitalized cost reduction, such as any trade credits or cash down, what your monthly payment will be, and any other fees that are going to be paid up front at time of application. A lot of times your title fees and your excise tax are included. This line shows that upfront sales tax is being paid not in on their lease payments. The next section is how your payments are determined. You have an agreed upon value by the dealership selling the vehicle to the leasing company. Then you add or subtract the options listed below to come up with the lease payment. The itemization of gross capitalized cost section on a lease agreement shows the agreed upon price of the vehicle and then adds options to be included in the monthly payments of the lease. Here is where a lessor's acquisition or administrative fee Maintenance contracts and sometimes tax is added into the cost. When tax is indicated here, we do not tax on top of tax. The monthly payment on the worksheet will be less than the monthly payment listed on the lease contract. As shown here, we have the agreed upon value from the dealership, 
the individual did not want to pay the amount for the, the administrative fee up front, so they added it into their monthly payment. Here again is sometimes an individual have their tax included in their monthly payment because they do not have the funds to pay the tax up front. For a closed lease, meaning the lease terms are set, a lease agreement is required to be submitted with every application for title on a closed lease. A lease tax worksheet should be submitted if the vehicle was purchased from a South Dakota licensed dealer. On a newly acquired lease, that means this is a brand new vehicle or a used vehicle just beginning a lease contract. If the monthly payment on the lease agreement matches the monthly payment on the lease tax worksheet, that would indicate that the motor vehicle excise tax is being paid up front and was not included in the monthly payment. So those are the correct figures to enter into the system or on the lease tax worksheet. If the tax was included in the monthly payment, meaning it was included in that capitalized tax area, then the payment on the lease worksheet will be less than the payment indicated on the lease agreement. To verify this, you look at the itemization of gross capitalized cost section on the lease agreement as shown on the previous page. The taxes line in this section will indicate the amount that was capitalized. Fees added in a capitalized cost area are not added to the lease tax worksheet on any line. Now completing the lease tax worksheet. The first example is a closed lease tax worksheet. Here you would indicate the monthly payment times how many months the lease is for, and the system will calculate the total. Then you would add any capitalized cost reduction. This is cash up front, rebates, trade-ins would be added on line two. Line three are the upfront fees, not capitalized cost fees. Upfront fees may be the lessor's administrative fee or document fee, acquisition fee, any other fees that are being paid up front and not in their gross capitalized cost. The system will then calculate all of those and give you the tax amount to be charged. An out-of-state lease tax worksheet. This worksheet is done when the out-of-state lease that is entering the state has had tax paid in their monthly payments. If tax was not paid in their monthly payments, that means tax was paid up front to that state and a South Dakota lease tax worksheet would be completed and credit would be given for the taxes paid to that state. If it was included in their monthly payment, from the day they enter the state, they should no longer be paying that leasing company that extra sales tax. We will charge the tax from the day they entered the state times the remaining months that they have due in their lease. We would put the remaining months and their lease payment in, which will calculate it. Again, line three and four are the same as the original lease tax worksheet for any upfront fees, capitalized cost reductions. Then the system will calculate how much is owed for the remainder of their lease to South Dakota. Again, the lessee should be contacting their lessor to stop being charged their monthly sales tax in their lease payments. At the end of their lease, if they choose to purchase the vehicle, they again will pay tax on their lease and purchase price. Remember that the lessee needs a power of attorney from the lessor to sign title applications, federal odometer information, the MSO or the title, if the lessor is not signing those documents. Thank you.